Ladies and gentlemen, Weibo Gaming vs. Billy Billy, what a f series. As you can see, it's already spoiled to you, right? But you have Weibo vs. Billy Billy. What a, what a f evolution these teams, the whole meta has gone through. And for the longest time, right, it's like the reason we saw people drop these range supports, right? These range supports got dropped and uh, you... Basically, what happened was that they buffed Relic Shield, they buffed Health Region, they nerfed the, the support items that you could stack your gold with quickly. They nerfed the champions too, like Renata took nerfs, Ash took nerfs. Uh, you know, all of these champions got hit somehow. But now we are going full circle again. We are going full circle again. And we are having matchups where everything is about bot lane. We got to the point where one game Ash was first picked. You know, Ash was first picked. And now, you know, the key thing with champions like this is that you need to be so precise in terms of how you play with your jungle. You need to be so precise in terms of your timers and how you leverage level one. You know, that shit was, was, was super, super big. You know, my general thoughts about this series was that Weibo had fantastic drafts in, in, in some of the games. I think the Shy played so much better than Bin today. I think that Weiwei was also the better player and I think he really set up the Shy for success with some key crucial moments in the game on topside. I think this was like really, really deciding. It's like the Shy really slowed down in terms of his impact, especially in game 5 in that Orn where he got solo killed and caught on side a lot. But the Shy had a really, really good day today. And I think that Weiwei was a crucial part in terms of how they built advantages on top. I'm really happy to see Weiwei play super, super good. And I think that Weibo started off on the right foot, right? They really started off on the right foot. It's like Weibo, they looked at the series that Billy Billy played so far and they removed the Jax, Javan and Rakan. That's a, that's a good place to start. But the evolution of this series definitely went in some kind of directions. So the first game, the first game came down to the Nico first pick, something that was very con con like contested, right? Um, Nico first pick contested for both Yaga and Jahu, super strong. Vi gets locked in, Zaya locked in. I think that this is kind of a mistake. I think it's better to go, if you really want the Zaya, you go Zaya, Rumble, and then third pick, for example, your Vi or your Wukong into Vi, and then all of a sudden you have a better draft, right? There was this guy in my chat that said, yo, this meta is better for the Shy, and I, I told him, yo, he Ben had some good Aatrox game, good Rumble game, and this guy, you know, really, really uh, was right, you know? The Shy really, really showcased that this meta was fucking right for him. I'm, I'm very cool with saying I was wrong, you know? The Shy had a really, really good performance and was way better than Bin today, you know? Base chatter. If, if that guy is still in my chat, you know, please let me know. Uh, I will give you the credit that you deserve. And now a bunch of people are going to say it was me and it wasn't them and it's ruined. Okay, we continue. So, Vi Zaya gets locked in. So, it's like they are picking Zaya to deny that from Vi, but Light doesn't play Zaya. And Zaya as a champion, you know, struggles against some of these range uh, options and Rakan is already out of the picture, right? So, Vi Zayag is locked in and then Rumble Aphelios. Here I thought, Weibo, why don't you play Wukong here? Wukong is going to be so good for you here. With, with Nico Rumble, you're going to transition into Divine Sunder really clean. You have a combo already, you're going to teamfight well. Uh, nevertheless, they lock in Aphelios, which is something that, of course, Light likes to play against Zaya, Caitlyn, Kalissa, Zao. Syndra gets locked on 3, there's no Orianna, so they pick a mage into Nico. But already if we compare like the premium picks, right? The premium picks here is Nico Rumble, and then the enemy gets to pick Jungle into Ban and uh, Zaya. But we've noticed that Zaya Pryo has dropped quite a bit because teams are more keen on playing these very, very, uh, you know, decisive bot lanes in terms of how strong they are in lane phase. And the crucial thing here is the Velvet lock-in. So what was the bad thing that we saw about the Velvet lock-ins is that... Um, Velvet was picked once by C9. That was terrible, right? That was together with like a Jax and really, really bad lanes. 
And then we had the same thing with, of course, uh, G2. They picked a very terrible Belveth game too. This one though, Belveth is perfect with Rumble Nico. Perfect. Brilliant. Because these champions are going to win lane from 1 to 6 always. And this is what Belved wants. Belved wants to invade, she wants to get first Herald, and she wants to snowball and leverage her pacing and clearing to clear her own camps and also clear the enemy camps. Thank you very much for the tier 1 Finny boy and also Masta for the Prime uh, before. I appreciate that. Additionally as well, uh, thank you very much Fistigons. I appreciate that. Any AD jungle is going to be good with Rumble Nico to be honest. Well, I think that I'm talking about Belved specifically what she needs. They need an AD jungler, yes. Like, I was thinking they're going to play Lee Sin here, but, but Belved is super, super good here. I wasn't a big fan of the Milio here, uh, because Aphelios Milio, together with the rest of the top side, I don't think it pairs uh, well enough. I think that here you want a melee support to just make sure that you are very streamlined in what you do, because if you play Aphelios, Belved, Milio as a 3, you don't fight so well, and this can turn into a dangerous game for Belved because she needs to take space first. Right? I think Milio here is pretty pointless. But nevertheless, let's take a look at this game. Because this game, it started off in a really, really good fashion. Because obviously, Billy Billy, they are aware of the fact that the enemy is going to go for the invade. Right? They are aware of it. They commit on to the situation. And the way it plays out, it's like oh, they put the ward, they see the invade coming, and then on goes through mid to be on the flank here on Weiwei. You know? Yeah, Milio was picked strictly for lane, for sure. Uh, then we continue. They managed to spot the enemy crossing and they wanted to naturally you want to push here as Belvet, you want to push Vi out of the bush on Raptor. So they're inviting them in, baiting them in, and here on finds a ch chunk on the shy, they trade the sums away, and this is of course a rumble that uh, you know is playing without TP. This is very, very rough. Super, super rough. And uh, no, Braum would be useless. And Vi here managed to take Raptors. Belvet is really slowed down. And also look at Nico. Nico just lost uh, is losing minions on wave mid two, you know? As a coach analyst, shouldn't all these changes be taken into account when predicting matchups? It seems like everyone is always saying, ah, the matchup changes made this team and that. What are you talking about? Cavelings. You want me to predict that play teams are gonna first time champions? Like this is the first time way we played on stage the shy like uh, like Belveth. You want me to predict like if, if I can predict that those things, bro? I'm uh, you know it's like I'm not in scrims. Everyone predicted Billy Billy will Giga Gab Weibo. Yeah, it's like Billy Billy came into this series as the favorite. That's that's the truth of it. They came in as a favorite. I think that most people saw Billy Billy as a favorite coming into this one. And the shy winning, like Dwebu winning is really fucking good, you know, fantastic. So we continue. So here, Weiwei took Raptors. Belveth is slowed down. Jahu lost a full fucking wave. Look at the route that Jahu has to take. Bro, Jahu lost a full wave with Nico, man. Like a full wave with Nico. This is uh, insanity, mate. Uh, this position is terrible because, as mentioned, Rumble wants to snowball early. Nico wants to snowball early. Belveth wants to snowball. This is a terrible position. But pay attention to what Weiwei does to really bring this game back. He, he, he does his wolves, goes into bottom side to then contest the bottom side crab. He's in the pocket and he contests bot side crab and he secures his bot lane and he spots for way way spots the blue. I think looking for this invade is a little bit uh, steep, uh, but he's playing on the fact that Jahu can hover and his bot lane has prior. This is a little bit like a big ask here. Uh, way gets pushed out, loses HP, but he gets the crab. And I really like the fact that way way crosses mid here and then takes enemy raptors. So so why? Uh, Slow down time and Weiwei gets a respawn of camps. So I really like this adjustment from Weiwei to still hit the beats. He was very slowed on tempo, but he made sure he was there for the crab and he made sure he was there for the raptor respawn. It's really, really good that he maintained focus on what is important, you know, because this raptor steal 
brings him ahead again, you know? We continue. The Shire recovering the lane as well. You know, he potted up twice and he recovered, which is also a tough spot to be in. Bin had TP advantage. And in here, you know, I think I think the key thing is just that uh, I think that Light is allowed to posture, uh, but um, uh, Crisp is not. Uh, so they managed to squeeze a kill. And this is, of course, very good for Billy Billy because Shun is doing it on a timer where he's not going to lose too much. You know, he is going to base into his golems. And uh, and that's cool, you know. But keep in mind, Wei Wei took his second wolf spawn, blue and gromp. So the condition of Wei Wei is already super good, you know. Really, really good. Now Vi goes takes golems, just 12 Cs behind, goes into bot side and clears. Here, this is a crucial moment where um, uh, Vi wastes a lot of time. Here, Vi can, is not allowed to waste time. Wei Wei goes into bot at 7 minute mark to secure the slow push in and make sure that they have vision and river. And then they can play the wave accordingly, and then the, it, Wei Wei can just cross into top side and play Herald without Vi finding counterplay, right? They don't want to be in a situation where enemy Vi has pressure on bot. So usually when you want to cross into top side, Wei Wei goes into bot all the way, secures the vision, is going to then cross into top and then play with his team. Which makes Vi be in a position where they can like basically, you know, not contest bottom side and also lose top side. You get me? Uh, we continue. This is the moment Vi needed to cross into top, but instead she's wasting time hiding on bush and... Uh, I think that in their mind they were worried about the dive, but I think it was not uh, a possibility. And then the crab spawns here, and um, Vi is spotted, and Wei Wei secures the crab. And now Wei Wei sees this, and he knows once again that he is 53 CS to 36. Vi is nowhere close to be uh, level 6. And of course, Wei Wei now is on level 6, you see his experience. He just got this crab right, and now he's just going to cross uh, and be level 6. And why waste so much time here when in reality she could have been on raptors, she could have been on red. But I think the idea here was that Billy Billy was very scared of the potential dive on bot. But the crucial thing for me, the detail is that Vi, if she crossed into topside and then the raptor, I don't think that she would have been spotted. And I think that uh, diving bot could have been very dangerous. We continue. Wei Wei here probably could look for lethal if he used his Qs uh, a little bit better, you know, the little dashes. Uh, and then he dashed out, you know, with the E. Uh, but the Kushun has no flash here and the W was, was well timed. He, either way, this is a massive win. He secures the Raptors and the Shai who has a base on top. I, the fact that Vi gets pushed out of his own jungle here, he is completely fucked. Like here, here he's just... Like here, Bin is KO'd. The matchup in itself is not hard. This, like Rumble, Rumble reminds me of what Aatrox was 2022. You guys remember Aatrox? Where people were willing to play into Aatrox in some cases, but it was only worth it if you got value elsewhere. In Draft, there was no value that they got out of this, right? No, no, no inherent value that they got for having Aatrox into, into Rumble. But here the fact that Vi gets pushed out, Wei Wei is going to take Raptor, is going to take Red, is going to take Herald. Bin cannot breathe. He just cannot breathe. Here is a big jungle diff in this moment. The Shai pulls the wave and the wave stays even and the Shai is just marking him. And Bin now, very beautifully what the Shai does here is that he's stacking the wave in unison with what Belveth is doing. This is super, super cool, you know? Like, yeah, Belveth is hitting, and they have a ward on it, but you can see Rumble is not pushing the wave. He's stacking the wave and playing for HP. And then when Belveth is done with the Herald, this is where he is going to crash the wave. Look at that synergy. Really nice. Really, really cool. Very nice. And now Bin is just KO'd. Look how many waves he lost into the turret. The Shy gets platings. Uh, he is completely out of this position. It it goes so far that even maybe the best decision is for Bin to burger flip and just queue the wave and try to uh like try to fucking die for the wave. Maybe it's the best decision. Because this is this is like game losing for him, you know? 
this whole sequence here, like maybe you should just ard, cue the wave, suicide for the wave, make the enemy use things and uh, have a quick base. And make the enemy at least burn ignite, burn some wolves, and, and, and see what's up, you know? He has to back off with his GG. No, it's it's GG right now. Like what he loses is GG. I think this is this is a moment where you can die, you know. Uh, okay, Flint's like it's fine to have opinions and having a conversation, but you're just like waging war against people, man. Like, like, why, 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 who, who cares about, like, you're just waging, waging war. You're, you're not expressing opinions and having a discussion. You're just here to shit on people. Blood doesn't even realize that we just watch an LPL versus LPL team, you know, like. <laughs> My bad, if that's how it seems. No, just this this sentence, man. All these LPL watches overhyping Billy Billy and JDG is what I'm all for this world. As long as JDG and Billy Billy doesn't win worlds, I'm happy. Like, <laughs> just, that's not having a discussion. <laughs> that's okay. But also on the other side, guys, don't don't be rude to him. You know, this is not an invitation for people to be rude to Kaflings. But that's not really an opinion. That's a preference. But it's okay. We continue. So now Bin is in the bin dumpster, right? Based on what we just saw top. And uh, everybody has recovered. Belveth is super far ahead. And that level one that we saw is just non-existent, you know? It's like... Uh, like... Uh, the, 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 it's just so tough. Because Shun has no way of contesting top side. Rumble conditions are amazing. Weiwei has full control over river wherever he goes. And they manage to find Bin here. He, he manages to juke the W, but it's not enough. The rumble on the fadeaway, the shy, didn't overheat. Uh, beautiful. Beautiful. Very nice. And now it's like Bin. Bin GG is, uh, is GG. We continue. This sequence was absolutely crazy. Because this was potentially like Billy Billy's way of coming back into the game. It's like... This is the argument for melee supports in a lot of cases. Is that they interact better in these type of skirmishes and fights earlier on in the game. Right? And... They drop everything on Wei Wei. And they try to slam him. They manage to find the Vial here, and Weiwei has no flash from before, right? And then they EQ, they CC, but the funniest part about this, I don't know if you guys saw the Insanity post, is that Yagao W's the crab onto him, and then Weiwei kills it, so he gets healed by the crab. That is why he lives. So the crab dies here. To his fucking pet. To his fucking jungle pet. You see the little blue wolf? It's crazy. Like, he didn't even smite it. He didn't do anything. It's his fucking jungle pet bouncing. Look at the bounce. 
And then the heel is flying to him. And then, you know, this moment is like, Billy Billy burnt flashes. They burnt every ult in the game. And this is terrible, you know, terrible. They pursue the fight. The Shy has crab move speed and sorcerer shoes. And then look at the Shy's flash over Syndra E here, man. Beautiful. This is very hard to do, man. It's a very crucial timing. Crucial timing. Look at that flash. It's not easy to flash a Syndra E, man. Bah. No, I'm not blaming Yagao, it's just funny that it played out that way. Obviously, hindsight, we can say that it was a mistake, he should have just thrown his Q, right? But, it's like, it's just... It's one of those things that happens. And now Top, top is completely in the dumpster, right? Bean's conditions are terrible, and they've managed to swing the game, they managed to get the Herald. It's like, I think the replays are going kind of crazy, it's like, at this point... It's like at this point, Bin getting solo killed, it is what it is, you know? I don't think that he should be judged too heavily off of the fact that he gets solo killed in this moment. It's just that everything that has come up to this point, he, he, he like, he's just in the dumpster, you know? He was looking for a Q3 into fucking passive hit, some kind of lethal angle, you know, but... It's like he's two levels behind, and enemy rumble has 3-0. Uh, he, he's it, it, the game is just kind of fucked for him, you know. Well, it's like Yagao definitely didn't have a good tournament. Jahu didn't have a good tournament. Scout didn't have a good tournament. Chovi didn't have a good tournament. You know, by the end of it, you know, I think that's fair to say, but. I think Yagao had a good year. Yagao had definitely had a good year. Like Yagao on regular split of, of LPL was really solid, really fucking insane at times. At MSI, it was really, really insane. BDD was sketchy too. It's like the mid laners were quite sketchy this time around, right? It's like Faker and, and, and Knight are just, uh, you know. I think this death is way worse, honestly. Yeah, it's just that it's like I I don't like his game. He can get dove on every wave. He can't walk on any wave. He cannot do shit, you know. So I I don't have an issue with this death too much. I don't think they all played bad, man. It's just super competitive this year. Um. I think that the mid lane meta is very restrictive. I think that the mid lane meta is not super dynamic. Uh, but uh, I also think that some mid laners, uh, usually the standard is higher. I, I think that if you have the eye test, you can definitely make this claim, you know? In your opinion, do Weibo deserve to win worlds? Of course. If they win worlds, they deserve to win worlds. It's like, if they lost in semis, I don't think that their semi, them getting to semis is uh, is like a celebration, you know? But if they beat Billy Billy and then they beat either T1 or JDG, then they fucking deserve to win. 100%, right? I don't I understand that people were like, oh, Weibo's uh, run was fraudulent because they didn't beat any Eastern teams, right? And they beat NRG in quarters. And if they lost in semis, then yeah, it's like their semifinals is whatever, because you could say that uh, Genji is better than them or whatever, right? But that's like, with, 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 a, with a single elimination tournament, you only care about who wins in the end, you know? And there's definitely easier tournaments to win than, than other tournaments. But if, if Weibo beat Billy Billy like they did today, and then he managed to beat T1 or JDG. I think that's cool. And then maybe like if T1 beat JDG and then T1 like completely run it down and they get 3-0 by Weibo, right? And it's a terrible finals. 
then yeah, maybe you can argue like, whoa, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> you know, if that's the case, then yeah. Okay, we continue. As mentioned now, it's like the blue side composition has managed to uh, accumulate a big enough advantage. Um, one was out and about and ran into a barbecue, got roasted, completely annihilated. Been in the dumpster. He has no business contesting this. Like, uh, bro, Ben uh, was having a stinker of a game, guys. Terrible game. There you go, you got, you got annihilated. Yeah, this is a moment, right, where his like the shy team just broke top, and uh, I think that uh, Rumble going past the neutral wave here is quite dangerous. I think that uh, this is something that is not necessarily like it's not necessary at all for the shy to hit this wave. You know, he can hover one time and wait for his team to open up on the map, and um, take it easy. You know, this is not necessary from the shy. Like, if there's any criticism towards the shy at this tournament, it is uh, that. Uh, yeah, he has some deaths before before Drake's and sometimes on side that uh, are quite painful, you know, because it's a big shutdown, you know. Zhao can TP earlier. Yeah, he can TP earlier, but then Aatrox TPs and then it gets dirty for no reason when the game is really, really won, you know. It can get dirty for no reason. It's impossible to avoid dying as Rumble on site. I just explained how he could have avoided it, you know? It's just that in terms of the information... Um, um, in terms of the information available, because his top just... Uh, top side, they just dove Aatrox on tier 2, and they are basing and resetting. A quicker TP from Jahu saves him, but then Aatrox TPs too, and then it gets dirty. Like, why are they fighting 2v3, right? It's not necessary. Okay? So keep in mind, the enemy is on the back foot. They want to find situations like that. And you don't have information on where the rest of uh, the Billy Billy members have opened. You know? They cross into the bottom side. It's like exactly what's happening now, they could have done, right? They just open through mid and then go to bot side. This is um, this is the same thing. Why is Shun on top side of the map here? Uh, because they don't uh, they don't win. They are too weak to match, so they are mismatching. Like they are very far behind on gold uh, and uh, and XP. One was kind of griefing it, like he was he gave up two kills in a row here that weren't necessary at all, right? The kill on like Rift Herald we take for what it is. I still think it's a highly preferential play. You really don't want Syndra to get that 800 gold shutdown for nothing. If Xiaohu TPs, it should be fine. Aatrox is completely useless. No, the mistake is that Rumble shouldn't contest that neutral wave. Uh, we don't need to talk about that point anymore. The irony of your name being Irrational Chess is... <laughs> it's, good, it's quite funny to me. <laughs> Very fitting. Yeah, I just, I just think that the, like if the game is decisive, why would you... Like, elevate risk, you know? I think that... Um, I was looking at the Storm Razor from Elk, and it kind of makes sense, right? It's like the move speed is very helpful in this game, and I don't think that uh, Kraken Slayer is going to give him super much value. I think Storm Razor is fine here. 
Uh, keep in mind, the, the horizon focus also applies on slows. That's why you like buy it on, on Victor, right? Because after you get a perfect hex score, you know? Yeah, the Shai's nickname is definitely Elevating Risk. So we're just gonna look at how this game ends. I thought here in this moment... I thought then if I just look at Tab, right? I don't think this is a moment where... Um, I, think, I think this moment, right? I don't think it's necessary to pressure. Because you're not going to you're not enjoying the lead super much here, right? That's the key thing. Like you're sitting on uncompleted items. So I, I, I didn't like that this is the point in time where Weibo decides to have pressure. I think it comes with uh, some risk. Because the enemy has full sums, they have items, you know. I, I think that uh, there was definitely like that, you know. What was up with Shun? He played so bad today. Well, we definitely played a lot better than Shun. I guess the Javan ban is just... Uh, it's just the way. Oh. Oui. Who's here? Hello, my friends. Can you guys explain to me what is KC? What is what is KC? Explain to me. What is KC? I don't know what KC is. What does KC stand for? Korean chicken. <laughs> Yeah, Shun just gets uh, snacked on, like they are just uh, contesting the midwave, but this is where the point where they needed to not get uh, over ego. Kamito Cannon? Kamito Cannon! Carmine Coach! Is that what Casey stands for? Interesting. Kamito Cannon! Oh. I see, I see. I see, I see, I see. That's what Casey stands for. Interesting. Korean cuisine. Korean chicken. Okay. <laughs> Billy Billy. Oh, hey. Do I like bow and upset? Actually, I like them a lot. I like them a lot. I like Kamito too. Bonsoir. Bonjour. It's good to see you all. What is your favorite color? June Berry? June Berry. A man can dream. Many men can dream, but many men cannot materialize that the same way Casey has done it. A man can dream. A man can dream. Now, Casey, it's been long awaited for Casey, but it seems to me that it happened at just the perfect time. It happened at the perfect time, ladies and gentlemen. What happened? Casey is in the LEC, bro. Casey's in the LEC. 
I hope coming in, into next year that uh, I don't get uh, out of the car, you know. I wanna, I wanna be alive. I wanna be alive to to enjoy. I want to be alive. I'll be watching Casey very closely. Very closely. I will study them. <laughs> My friends, we are reviewing the Billy Billy vs. Weibo series. We are taking a look at what we can take away from it. And then the preparation for tomorrow. Billy Billy, the band Rumble. I think a crucial detail here is uh, I thought the Velvet Band is strange. The Velvet Band is strange because the Velvet really relied on Rumble and Nico, guys. So Rumble is out, Javan is out, Nico, Rihanna, they're removing the mid laners that uh, Yagao is playing. They follow up with Velvet, they remove Renata Glass, probably Chris, best champion. They first pick jacks. Fair play, they first pick jacks. Here the issue that the way we run into is they have to pick Caitlyn here because if they don't, they run into Zyra Khan 2-3. They have to pick part of both. And they need to pick champions that are very durable against um, Zyra Khan. Very durable. Right? So they blind Kate and they're gonna pick support as an answer. Varos Ash gets locked in. So the beauty of Varos Ash, the same way Kaiser needs to be paired with a melee support to function, the same way Caitlyn needs to be paired with a range support to function. Varos Ash gets locked in, and the strength of these two, with the strength of AD carry supports, right, is the fact that they can leverage Hail of Blades. And base stat wise, they are very strong. That's what makes them so OP. And when it comes to matchups like this, initiative is everything. What is initiative? If you are stronger on wave number one, you're going to be stronger on wave number two. And if you're stronger on wave number two, you're going to be stronger on wave number three unless the enemy jungle disrupts you. And if you're stronger on wave number three, you're going to be stronger on wave number four too. Because you have XP advantage, HP advantage and you have a mini wave advantage and as the third wave is crashing you can push her forward and start chipping away on wave 4 and keep harassing the enemy under the turret as they are farming so initiative is everything so in this particular game right with the Ash and the Varus you're going to see that level 1 they just go into the bot bush. They go into the bot bush, they sweep, and they're going to stand here on bot bush number three. Usually in cases like this, you know, if they have, the have the champions for it, then level one is civil war on both sides. But they have Azir, they have Maokai, they can't commit into any civil war. They, it's not possible. It's just not possible. We continue. Your breakdown uh, be on YouTube, yes. So, now they have initiative, double Halo Blades, they are way too OP level 1. You compare the runes, you have Fleet Footport, Comet, these are the optimal runes for these champions, right? But they cannot contest level 1, right? So they maintain initiative. So Varus and Ash, they got such a big chunk, big trait. Ash level 1 with Halo Blades does a shit ton of damage. I like this tech from the Shy, starting E with Aatrox into, into, uh, into Jax, you know, to E to E. Very standard stuff, good stuff. And as you can see here, Vi did three camps into Bot River to make sure that Maokai doesn't do anything cheeky. He doesn't allow him to do anything cheeky. But Weiwei is still looking for that cheekiness. He's still looking. He's going all the way around to try to find the gank, and Shun, after crossing river here, uh, also finds Jahu's flash, which is really, really big. 
So as you can see on both, as I mentioned, light is low HP, crisp, uh, crisp is low HP, and on and elk, they have full initiative. They chip away at the wave, they get level 3 first, they have full control, they have a ward. But now Weiwei is looking to, to break, uh, break the matchup. Here Weiwei is going, but they're fighting in the wave and they heal. And keep in mind, Light and Crisp, they have, uh, uh, they have uh, no way of maneuvering this. Say merci, Kamel. I didn't say thank you to Kamito. Of course, thank you, Kamito. I appreciate it. Making my chat so crazy. But the thing is, I have a lot, I have a lot to thank for. But we talk about that some other time. Okay, so as mentioned before, Weibo Gaming, level 2 on the wave, they cannot set up this gank, they actually get uh, 2v3'd, you know? They just get 2v3'd straight up. Here I think what's crucial is, when I saw this live, I was like, wow, Bin, Bin actually smurfed here. But the thing is, the Shy actually has TB advantage here. So it's not that horrible, it's not that horrible, you know? It's like the Shy is going to TB back, he's going to make this wave crash, you know? And... Um, uh, Jax has no TP. So it's not too terrible. Because uh, in the end, the Shy maybe could have outplayed this. He could have used Flash something. Uh, maybe it could have been better. Uh, but this is not terrible for the Shy. Trading one for one. He has TP back and Bin has to stack, catch his monster wave. The Shy will be able to crash this no matter what. Uh, the only crucial detail is that Shun has uh, priority into topside. And uh, he cleared uh, Weiwei's camps. And this was a very tough game for Weiwei. Bro, he's ahead. Uh, partially yes, but keep in mind there's a big wave here, right? That he's going to take. Hello. Good to see you all. Welcome, welcome. We are breaking down the games. Here, Weiwei pushes forward and he spots the fact that enemy Vi is... Base. So, Bin here, he tried to chunk away the Shy and leverage the fact that Vi was coming first, but the Shy played it so well. He made the enemy lose more HP, and the fact that uh, Shun has the stronger position, he's, he's faster than Wei Wei, stronger than Wei Wei, it just doesn't matter here. Like, the Shy played this beautifully. Really, really well done. So, Bin sacrifices HP, sacrifices potion, and uh, the Shy begins to slow push out. And then the sapling just spots Vi beautifully. And Bin is taking damage. You see some Whippo trading here from the Shy. He's just chunking him onto the turret. He gets pulled. And Bin has no E. Jai was now pushing for the dive. And Vi based, but ran straight into top. And Bin here is trying to fight and kill the minions to get level 6. But as you can see, he's quite far away from it. And he is looking to see us, and the cannon doesn't die. This is a moment where you can really, really see the impact of the minion changes. This is so funny because this is the only case I've seen ever where the minion changes actually hurts the guy who's getting dove. So, the reason I say it is because in the past, these minions would hit the jacks when he, when he aggroed. Right? But now, if minions ever hit the turret, they never let go. That's a change that has happened because they wanted to make it easier for people to lane against ranged supports and ranged champions in general, right? Because in the past, you got traded on and you couldn't hit back, you couldn't fight back. Or if enemy walked up for, for, for plating with fucking demolish, the minions would just destroy you, you know? Because they would target you. Uh, but this, uh, of course, uh, Bin didn't get 6 here, and then eventually gets killed, you know? So he doesn't get 6, he's 1 minion away, and if he got the aggro there of the E, and then could E the wave with full damage, and then R, he could clear the whole wave and maybe survive. But the fact that they set up for that gang before, Bin lost HP, and Vi channeled recall and got spotted by Maokai, this enabled this whole play and this whole situation, you know? Which is really, really big. And now, once again, you know, Ben is in the position where he's uh, is quite behind, you know. So 
So we continue. Crucial detail here is of course Varos and Ash are having a really really good time on both. I think that Yagao had a very solid Silas game. Like he was a, a very important piece in this in this particular game. The Vi ult comes in, the combination with the with the with the Azir ult. Uh, Jahu had a stinker here in, in, in game two. Uh, this of course is leverage into a Herald and Jahu's strength doesn't matter as much. Where we're here, level five, because of the things that we saw before, he pushed you for the dive and was behind because he wanted to go for the bot gank and couldn't do it. Uh, they are trying to contest. It's a little bit uh, psycho, I'd say, but uh, the shy is feeling very strong, so they go for it. The fact that Shun gets uh, the the kill and gets HP back from from the cookie, right? It's, it's he buys so much time. It's 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 insanity. But they trade one for one and they get the Herald too, and I think um, it's a pretty solid outcome here for um, for Billy Billy. So we continue. Yagao is just committing all the way here to save Bin's lane state because he f he fought there, he fought there, and uh, he lost all of his HP and the Shy is in good condition. This wave would just be frozen if Yagao didn't look to do shit like this, you know? But it seems like it's getting frozen anyway, so I guess Yagao is just kind of trolling. I guess it doesn't really... Like they, they don't even manage to uh, they don't even manage to to crash the wave or do anything like a guy was just saving his boy Ben is giving him emotional support so I think uh, this wasn't necessary they couldn't walk up further there they couldn't no Malka was right behind and uh, you know it is what it is Now, even though Caitlyn and, and, and Lux had a hard time in lane, I think the crucial detail is more about deaths like this, you know? It's like there's no real, not re no, no real point as to why uh, Chris needs to walk up like this, you know? There's no reason why. We continue. Well, the Shai has uh, plays lane and leverages the power of minions and his own strength so fucking well. Like, I think really like Weiwei and the Shai cooperated so good. I think this this might sound crazy, but the, the Shai Weiwei might be like the the best jungle top synergy we have left in the tournament. They are really really like really fucking. Like executed super super well off of each other. I think on the other side, you know, it's like three six nine and Zeus are really really good standalone players, you know. But in terms of how Weiwei and Deshai are cooperating, I think that uh, that shit is really really insane. I love hearing disrespect for owner. How is that disrespectful to owner? Like... So me mentioning like that uh, the Shy and Weiwei are cooperating well together, people, t T1, <laughs> T1 fan takes it as insult. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely the Waffle Pancake over again. But here is just uh, Weiwei is securing the lane. It's like Weiwei was very far behind, right? But but this is jungling. I, this is what I was trying to highlight, right? That um, I think that Kanavi and Weiwei as junglers are really, really good at hitting the beats, you know? So hey, Weiwei is level 6, he doesn't give a fuck. He, needs, he knows he needs to be here on the wave, and he sacrifices everything for it. I think this is something that Weiwei and Kanavi do better. 
while Shun and Owner are more instinctual and um, and they play mechanically like super super well in terms of like fight angles and, and, and situations like this, you know. Hey, Wei Wei's level 6, he doesn't give a shit, you know? He doesn't give a damn. He just uh, he, he knows he needs to be here on the way because the enemy wants to force and if they are ho ho hovering at the right time, it's uh, really, really good. I like this type of play. We continue. This was such a crucial moment. Because honestly, I think if Aatrox TP goes through, I think that they might just win the whole game. Like, like if, if, if the Shai's TP goes through, this could have been mental. Absolutely crazy. But this this TP just gets cancelled here. I, I, I don't see it so well on the minimap, but I think that Bin recognized the timing of when the TP is channeled on bot, and uh, he finds the cancellation really easily because he saw when the guy went, went into the bush, you know? So if this TP goes through, man, like, if there was a way for him to make sure that this TP goes through, like, it could have been a game changer. But in, 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 instead, it turns into such a big negative, you know? It turns into a massive negative. They give two kills away, and Chris dies too, and... Jiahu also is in the dumpster, you know, and it's like Shun survives with one HP, actually he dies, I thought he survived, maybe I'm confusing him with something else. It was such an opportunity that now turned into such a disaster, you know? It's like, I, I can't comment exactly on what the Shai should have done, but like all, all we know is that if he gets his TP off, it would have been like a game changer, you know? That's, that's the crucial thing. No, like if 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 he sees, and now all of a sudden the game is just blown up completely. It's like Billy Billy is on par now to to get to the second Drake. Uh, they are in super good conditions. Varos has been gig accelerated. Silas is also in monster conditions here with the first strike level eleven, six dark seal stacks. Everything is uh, uh, everything is in his favor, you know. Take a look at this fight. I don't remember this one too much, so just just uh, have a little sniff. It's crazy because if this Varus ult hits, it's so close. The Varus ult could have really popped off here. No, 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 for sure. It's like. Maybe if he walks away further, like I, I I don't comment on, I comment on the fact, I comment on the fact that the shy couldn't get the TP off, but if he TPs three seconds later, then there's no play, and if he TPs a second later, then Bin will just chase him further to get the cancel, you know, like all of these things, you know. So. I, I don't want to focus on, on, on that detail, you know? Uh, we continue. So it's crazy, it's like these, these games with these range supports and crazy matchups on both, they're so decisive. Because like if you fall behind with like a champion like Lux, your contribution is like non-existent, you know? Really non-existent. It's very hard as well because um, you see what I mentioned with, with Korea, right? And how T1 want to play. You see these type of bot lane pairings, Varus, Ash, they need to be both in the mid wave. Caitlyn, Lux, they need to be both in the mid wave. So the jungle is, is, is playing a libero role where he can be very, very active. And this is the playstyle that T1 really, really like. It's like base of today, I feel like... Uh, T1's chances to win against JDG increased in my, in my mind. Because <laughs> I think that they are really, really good at playing like this. But my concern still is that um, 
I think I think Kanavi is a stronger jungler at playing around bot, but Kanavi has had some stinkers, you know. Kanavi has had some rough games. Because Weiwei does a really, really good job of being where he needs to be. While Owner and Shun are the type of players, they keep the CS up, they are always strong in the game and they team fight well, you know? Karabi had rough games in regular season. I mean, he'll give a fuck about regular season. No, he had rough games... He had great games, but he also had bad games. Like game four against KT was a bad Kanavi game. Like he, he Kanavi's had bad games at this tournament. But it's bad in comparison to his peak. And in, on his on his peak gameplay, I think he's the best jungler. Yeah, owner had bad games too, yeah. Maybe at this tournament, less so. Like... Owner played not so good against Genji, I'd say. We're talking about worlds, you know? I think he played fantastic against C9. I think he played really insane against LNG. He played pretty damn good against um, Billy Billy. Owner did first blood peanut in that game. Yeah, that was definitely him being good. Um, but yeah, we continue. Like owner is definitely in, in good form by, by his standard for sure. All right, we continue. So this game is just a slow burn, right? It's like Varus is going Cyrilda. Everyone's super strong. They got the right Drake to spawn, right? Um, uh, th this is what was kind of disappointing, you know? It's like, this This feels like opposite day. Because usually Ben is the guy who is always so consistent and so fucking strong, but he was the one giving up a couple of freebies and he was uh, a liability in this game, you know? Usually you see Ben on Jax, you think that, oh, he's going to run the whole game, right? Uh, but he um, didn't have, uh, like the Shy just played better, honestly. Usually it's the reverse, you know? It's like usually his team is kind of griefing and... Why play Jax though? Let's uh, let's not open that can of worms. Let's not be revisionists. Yamaro, we have seen Rule and Mercy survive unplayable any phase against good bot lanes. Can I punch the enemy bot lane every time? Yeah, I still have JTG as my prediction. I'm just saying that, like, this may be, this is a good sign for T1, you know? I think Missing is a fantastic range support player, and I think as laners, Missing uh, is uh, Missing together with Ruler, they are fantastic. I didn't like this. I think this is really unnecessary. I think I have a very good eye for when you should do Nash and not pressure Nash. But it's like looking at the details of this spot, it's like you don't have the best Nash team. And I think that you should really, really like just play for the Infernal. It just, you, you have the best odds of winning like that, you know? I think they were very lucky with the Drake roll because Infernal is fucking massive. But uh, I think this is, this is just really dangerous. They don't have a lot of armor. They don't have a lot of DPS even. Like this is just straight up trolling, I think. This is, uh, this is really, really true. I think, I think Korea and the range support meta is uh, one of the best supports in the world, 100%. Korea and the melee meta is mechanically good, but it's just that, that Korea, Korea owner pairing, it doesn't work well, I think, in, in like melee and, 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 and jungle, because they need to connect always, always, always connect, but they always, they always like doing their own thing. And sometimes it's good to do your own thing, but in some cases not. <laughs> and the range support meta, very good to do your own thing, you know?
Yeah, I don't think I don't, I don't think Blue Side had anything to do with uh, with the winning of today. You know, I think it's just I think there was just like layers to the draft that uh, that was surprising to to some of the teams. I have to say though, usually, like if 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 you play if you have a bot lane that plays all the combos against another bot lane that plays all the combos, being able to pick full combos on two three. So for example. Um, So here, right, in these in this spot here, if enemy doesn't pick a bot laner here, then you can pick like Zaya Rakan. You can go uh, Kalista, right, and uh, Renata, as we saw, and then enemy can only answer with one, and that could be that could be powerful. Or that we saw like Ash Varus. Like if you're playing bot lanes that are uh, if, if you're playing if you're in a scenario with both bot lanes playing like everything it can be powerful to be slamming full bot on two three but we continue let's just see the ending of this game and move on to to, to game number three Here, really, really, they are contesting the space and tethering to the enemy and not rushing Drake because they don't want to give the enemy an opportunity to just freely do Nash. So they're contesting the space first and then they are playing. The Shy gets one shot. I was so surprised by the Vi damage. Like, the Vi is just fucking pretty much one shotting him. No, uh, T1 was definitely better in spring than in summer. Like, summer was a very rough, rough spot for them. Like, it was really, like, they were having a really hard time. Why are we looking for a steal? Because he doesn't know the HP of it, right? And they're just crossing through, uh, through Hellfire. And now the game's over. All right, game number three, guys. Game number three. Way back on blue side, Jax, Java, and Rakan, they stick to the same bands. Billy Billy adapt and ban Rumble, Oriana, Nico, and leave all the bold laners open. A Weibo Gaming go for first pick Ash. Interesting. Uh, first pick Ash. Uh, they didn't want to look for the first pick Maokai because they didn't want to invite the Silas, so they just went for a first pick Ash. Kalista Vag is locked in, and I thought here on three that they're just going to pick Nautilus. I thought they're gonna pick Nautilus here. Um, thing is, it's like sometimes you can see people and teams like overcooking completely on going in the direction of winning lane because winning lane isn't everything. It's a very crucial part of the game, but it isn't everything. Because eventually, like this Caitlyn was just completely useless. I don't agree with the note, they wouldn't get three drakes with note, but these three drakes don't matter at all. What did these three drakes do? Nautilus loses to range super, does it not? No. It doesn't. Like, look at this, guys. Alright? Nautilus ban. Nautilus ban. Here they have Renata, so no Nautilus ban. It's like Nautilus is a champ that can be played into range supports, guys. Like, let's not be delusional. Like, let's not jump to such crazy conclusions that Nautilus can't play against range supports, you know? But uh, I just wanted to highlight this this T1 as a team is banning Nautilus. Nautilus. And here they picked Renata, so they don't care about Nautilus, right? Like, Nautilus is a support that can actually, like, contest early, you yeah? know? Like, Nautilus is a strong laner. It's 
It's like always when I did, uh, I did my presentation, right? Let me just uh, find it real quick. It's like when I did my presentation, I uh, I did this thing, right? When I did my presentation for both, right? It's like the moment the Caitlyn flipped over, then the, the I expected the range to put meta to 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 go. And then I expect bot lanes to go 4-5 and invite deeper scenarios unless they can pick Zyraka. Like that was my estimation. So I, I, I thought there was some room for it to be teased, you know? But I didn't think it would be that heavy of a shift, you know? I, I just didn't think. Uh, but yeah, we go back. And my issue here with Kate is just... I don't know. I just don't think... It's just the game is just hard to win. That That's that's all I think. It's just, it's just hard to, to finish the game. But maybe everything would have been just different if they have Kalista, Vi, Caitlyn, and then you just pick Syndra here on 4. Because I think that... In games that are so fast, I feel like... Akali feels a little bit out of place. And then there's a conversation around Graves, right? I think... Basically, the, the Zeus played Graves on a Smurf account. Big Graves on a Smurf account. Sorry guys, I dislocated my lens out of my eyeball. I need to uh, put it back. Is it back? Maybe it's back. Oh, I'm back. So, Graves into Aatrox. Sounds like a good matchup for Graves. My concern about Graves is how does he win the game, you know? Like, that's 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 my concern always with a champion like Graves. But Graves against Aatrox, I don't think Aatrox can ever find angles to, to pressure Graves. He's going to tank all of the poke of Q. He can dash out of W always. And if Aatrox can't uh, complete W, I don't think that he can win. I think this is something that Zeus will play too. Like, I mentioned this in my rundown, I mentioned Aatrox is a go-to blind, and um, I think that um, the answers that Zeus has cooked up is Akali and Graves. How to find Smurf account? Like, let me see. I, I think it's just there. It's, it's, it's not like hidden. Uh, where are they? Where's the team tab? Where are the pro player? What's the pro player tab? Is it here? There he is. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Look at that. Some random account is just playing Graves. <laughs> there we go. Uh, nevertheless. If they go Syndrome 4, maybe things change, right? It's like they're just picking like Aatrox Akali into Poppy showing. I think it's just tricky, you know? It's just that... Like, you, in the end, you're playing Kalista Caitlyn against fucking Ash Varus. This is... Like, Ash Varus Syndra. 
to, to, to break that when Poppy can defend them is, is, is tough. It's really tough. But maybe I'm uh, over-focused on it. Uh, let's take a look at the game. I think this game, right? It's like Graves got such a big advantage again. It's like the Shy is just fucking smurfing on cooldown. He's uh, just pushing the wave on top. Perma, hitting the wave, fleet footwork. The comment is not doing enough. Yagao dropping low, but that's just the matchup, right? We know that already. We fast forward a little bit more. Uh, Billy Billy's bot lane did really good, a good job, bot. I think you guys underrate the value of Graves pick. Who's you guys? Uh, I need to, I need to see what's up. I need to remind myself of what happened in this game. So Billy Billy secured first bot. They have prior on bot. They're winning the lane with Caitlyn uh, uh, Kalista, which is huge, really big. This all in is terrible. Like Poppy is into top side, your team just did Drake, he's looking for lethal, and he the smoke screen is just plays good, and I don't think he had lethal. Like here, the shy just juking it out of the fog is really big. And this is massive, like this is terrible. It's like here he lost his whole top side. Looking at this all in here is, is really bad for the game because Vi just wants to enjoy the Drake she just took and then rock and roll, you know. I think that Graves is really good in situations where uh, your team composition outranges the enemy, you know? Then the enemy needs to go through Graves and then Smokescreen can get a lot of fucking value, you know? It's like you saw it last uh, 2021 world when it's like Philandre won a world championship only playing Graves top. And that was like a heavy mage meta mid, you know? And uh, this was... Like, his compositions were very long range, and uh, he got a lot of fucking value, you know? I don't think Graves is gonna get picked tomorrow. I think Zeus is ready to play it. It's like, I, I, I straight up showed that he played it on a random account here, you know? Um, I think that he can play pick it into Aatrox. I like that Weiwei always does the same, right? These are the type of beats that Weiwei is really good at, and I also think Hanavi is really good at. I think that um, Weiwei now hovering into bot, making sure that bot is secured and they can crash a wave so they can play the Herald. I really like that type of gameplay. It's really cool. Here, I think if we talk about the Rift Herald fight, I think that blue side is stronger. But only if the enemy can't one-shot Syndra. What is good about double AD ball lane in the meta? Why did it change from the beginning of the tournament? Um, I'm not so sure, honestly. I, I, I think that um, uh, people just realized that laning against these champs is too decisive. And people just went back to what we know from... Uh, uh, from what we know, you know? Bin didn't play anywhere near as bad as being it, as it's being made out to be. Made out to be by who? Like, I think it's so weird when people come in here with some pretense about like some community discussion. Bro, like I don't go on Twitter. I don't go on Reddit. Like I, I don't know. I, uh, I don't go on any of these social medias. So I, I don't know what the community sentiment is. You know. I think though one thing for sure is it's like these Halo Blades lanes. If you don't, if you make mistakes, then you just lose the game. Like, you're not allowed to make any mistakes. Here, I like this way of contesting. It's like the Shy is just posturing forward. He's Ninja Tabi here. I like it. Like, he's just posturing forward. If uh, if Billy Billy commit on Weibo with these, these players, then they should be losing. But here, Weibo, they cross away and they don't let Jahu connect here. Way, way with the fucking heist of the century. I think the angle that Bin played from here was pretty good. He's waiting for Q to come back here, or the Q2'd. 
doesn't want to Q3 here. I really like this this display here from everyone involved because Wei Wei like ults out. Uh, he ults out, uh, if I remember correctly, he ults out Kate and then Kate gets Kalista ulted. And then she gets thrown back into... Didn't even hit Poppy ult, he hit Poppy ult. But he Kalista ulted the Kate back. <laughs> and then Wei Wei goes in, steals the Herald, goes out. And um, this fight is just awkward for Weibo because uh, they're getting pulled into an area where they're going to get flanked, you know? That's the key thing always for Weibo is that they need to protect their flank and they need to always, uh, you know, take it easy. On the jungler, hmm. You know, you can block pop yield by his Q, you know? But okay. Uh, throughout the situation, Aatrox didn't push out bot, Varos pushed out of the way, and then the wave was bouncing into him. So Varos is going to recover some CS, and Aatrox is not recovering anything. You know? I think if Weibo managed to like connect together on Pixel, and the Shy and the Weiwei pushed them out appropriately, I think that that fight could have been better for, for Blue Side. But uh, they got pushed so, so far that it wasn't good. So here, a Graves' conditions are way better, they have Herald. Uh, Billy Billy managed to secure the Drake off of the bot wave that was bouncing towards Varus. And we continue. Yeah, look at the item advantage for the Shy man. He bases on a full Storm Razor against these long swords. It's absolutely crazy. Lauren Seal, thank you very much for the tier one. I appreciate it, brother. Thank you. There's 40 CS advantage, big item advantage. It's like the all in was bad. Poppy pushed him out. And then on the Rift Herald situation. Bin got really fucked because he didn't get any gold off of it. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. He couldn't push out bot, he had to walk to a drake, and he didn't get a single wave. And then the wave got pushed into graves and he caught that wave too. So now the shy is 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 50 CS head, you know? What are those Aatrox runes? Uh, people play Comet in the range champs as Aatrox just to, to lane better, but I think in the end it doesn't seem to matter at all against fucking fleet footwork, you know? I think I think Graves into Aatrox sounds pretty like the, the theory sounds really good and also in practice it seems to check out. They managed to finish the turret and the Shy is just having the greatest time. Keep in mind as well, when you hit fleet, when you hit fleet on turrets, you get full HP back. It counts as hitting a, you don't get the minion reduction, you know? So you get just full full HP back from hitting it. And now with this massive Graves advantage, it kind of compensates for any accomplishment that Billy Billy's bot lane has, has done, you know? They go all the way here, and uh, they are thinking to themselves, oh, uh, like Aatrox feels safe on this side of the map. I think maybe if anything, I'm looking at Aatrox and maybe you could let the wave be closer to him. Uh, I think it could have been better. Bin got kind of fucked by his team, no? I think that the Rift Herald fight was very bad for him, but that All-In on 6 was very bad for him too. Uh, so there's a mix of a mix of both. But, um, you know, it's like at this level, you make one mistake, two mistakes, and then it's like you are going to really, really fucking annihilate yourself, you know? The Graves damage with the Empowered Auto from Storm Razor, looking juicy. And... Um, here yeah, in this spot, you know, off of this gank that they did uh, against uh, the enemy top lane, and they're just committing all the way. Because they are not on time to defend bot. Poppy showed. So, in the case of Poppy is in Fog of War, they can pressure into bot, whatever. But uh, they just went for this spontaneous play onto Bin because they assumed he's going to push. And they, they, they pushed him out of uh, the situation, you know. But this also gives so much freedom for Caitlyn and Kalista to, like, really, really hit hard on the bot. And Varus Nash need to be very scared of getting dove. So Weibo Gaming just commit all the way into the turret and they uh, want to fuck up uh, Ben here too. Ben is walking up and playing on his flash. He's trying to create some chaos in the position to maybe let Akali do accomplish something, but it's not enough to do anything and uh, Yagao is just um, uh, uh, wasting time here. Couldn't Billy Billy dive bot? Uh, yeah, they, could. They, they, they should and they could, I think. I'm not sure why they don't. 
A kid, I don't know why Varos can be under the turret. I, I don't get it. That's a good point. So they trade the tier 2, the enemy gets a tier 1 on both without Herald, and Varos and uh, Ash are sacking. Uh, we continue. So my, my, my main concern here for Billy Billy's composition, right? Obviously Graves has a massive advantage. And a lot of that got accelerated. But in terms of where we land, compositionally, I don't think it's an easy game for Kalista to play. I don't think it's an easy game for Caitlyn to play. And tell me honestly, if at this point in the game, sure, Graves is super far ahead, but let's pretend he doesn't have that Dirk, okay? He doesn't have that Dirk, and that's that's his big advantage. Like him being 1k ahead is like reasonable to some degree, right? It's like now I would much rather have a fucking Nautilus uh, and not have that CS advantage. Uh, and at the same time, you know, at 6, you're going to have some swing timers. Just this is where it feels really, really hard to do much in the game if the enemy plays appropriately. I think it's it's super tough. At least Akali can, like, match Graves on side because he's so armor skewed. So there's, like, potential there. But they need to be able to find ways to force and they need to find ways to, to flank, you know? But then again, right, it's it's hard to say because if the enemy gets uh, the Drakes and they lose early and Kalista's behind, she's also useless. It's like there's two schools of thought to it, you know. That's why it's like a bit um, hard to say exactly because in some games people are skewing very heavy into like lane optimized picks and they're winning the game off of it. But then it's like, it's, it really depends on, you know, so many factors, you yeah? know? So many factors. Because at least at this point in the game, for sure, you won't have the Nautilus. Like, this Caitlyn does absolutely nothing, right? But that's, that's every Caitlyn game, you know? It's like, that. this is just lane bullies to the max. So it's, it's hard to say. It's like, Caitlyn won lane against Varus Ash, and see, she secured Drakes. If, let's say, Vi dies on that timer that we talked about when Poppy commit into the top side, and they really fucked them up, like, maybe that, that would have been, like, uh, enough, you know, to put Kalissa in, in a big swing, you know? So it's um it's an interesting conversation, you know. Like you, you cannot miss anything. Like you cannot miss anything at all. Like Varus Ash catching like two, three waves there is a big deal. Yaga was playing in the right space here. I like what Yaga was doing here and uh, the Cinder Ult trade for Kalista Ult. Uh, cool stuff. And Yagao here off of this position. Today blue side won every game, but I don't think it was necessarily like due to blue side. I'd say. Is easy dive Varus ult, Ash ult, and summoners? Yeah, it's easy dive. Keep in mind they have Kalista ult, they have Vi ult. These are like abilities that uh, makes it super easy. Here I like the timing, right? It's like if you want to understand like why Billy Billy chose to have this fight, it's because Cinderay is down and Poppy is not in the position to cancel the spells, right? That's why they are pulling the trigger. But I, they are practically playing this 5 over 5, let's be honest. And I like how Weibo position, because on the breakthrough, the Shire can hit for free, you know? I think maybe there's a world here where Shun can use his ult differently, but Elk needs to be hitting. Keep in mind Elk as well went Hail of Blades rather than Lethal Tempo, so he doesn't scale as hard, you know? I 
I'm looking now here if Yagao could do more, like his E doesn't land on anyone. Like I think he should just fucking R2, hold R2 and just hold E, and just slam R2 and then E. Because it's hard to flash. But it's not that uh, big of a deal. I'm just looking here like Kalista and Kate, like how, what is their contribution, you know? And then the poppy ult on, on Ben is really, really huge. He denies, like, he did, like, H was completely denied. And uh, Yaga could have played a little bit better, but the poppy ult was massive there on Aatrox. Even now, I, when you watch me on co-stream, I didn't feel certain that Billy Billy is going to win. I didn't feel certain at all. I felt like if Weibo, whenever they were in situations where they grouped up and they just sieged, I didn't see a realistic way for Weibo to actually break through. Um, it was just very, very hard for me to, to imagine that. Like, you need to legit throw Caitlyn at the enemy, you know? It's like, you're, you're sitting on three drakes, you're you're preparing for, for the next big situation. And um, this composition from blue side is just really, really good. It's just a fucking fortress that is very hard to break. Yeah, I favor Weibo as well. I don't know who you're talking to, Uncovering Real, but... When I was looking at this game, I was like, yo, this is... I don't see how Red Side can win. It's like, they need to get the Drake somehow, but... Uh, I think that Blue Side looked favored to me here. What would be a better mid pick here? I think it's hard to ask for more, right? It's like, like this is a fantastic Zerath game, right? Like, but it's like you 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 are going into deep territory, you know. It's just, there's a lot of bands here, so people are just picking whatever they can play, you know. But nevertheless, uh, we continue. Yagao was getting a lot of good space. You know, Yagao was playing in the right pockets. I don't think Yagao had that, that bad game. Like, this was a solid Akali game, you know? This was a solid Akali game. Like, he's playing in the right spots, right pockets. And uh, he's creating space. Uh, I said on costume as well that I thought even if Billy Billy managed to get soul, I don't think it like decides the game, you know. Yeah, Gao used R. Tries to protobelt to find some room in the pocket. And you see here Jahu, like Jahu literally like fucking carries the situation because look how he chunks on here, boom. I like that he throws the W into the wall to extend the range over the wall here. And he gets the chunk on on, on his half HP. And then Jahu as well here on the combo here on Vi, just fucking so straight up one shots it. It's like Shun here ults the poppy. So he doesn't get ult because you're unstoppable. Yeah, this is this was a the reason I mentioned Zerath is that I think in most games it's really fucking hard to play, but here there's a poppy jungle, right? So that's like that's the nuance, you know. Enemy has poppy jungle, the mages become a little bit better, you know. Do you think Yagao ulting the Graves was the move? He had to fight back, you know? He can't let, like... He has to fucking fight back here, you know?
lot of Gruzuru Barishnu. I'm just giving like a suggestion, you know, it's like if you're playing against Varos Ash, um, it's like the amount of champions that are good, there's not a lot. Oh, it's like the reason I mentioned Zera, it's like you want to play Ari here. You want to play like a very long range champion here. You know? You want to play a like artillery champion, much, you know? We continue. We just are in a replay and uh, we just, uh, yeah. The guys just got arrows on the back end and then boom. The game is over. The game is over, ladies and gentlemen. Look how strong the shy is on the back foot here. Look at him just posturing and just denying the whole bot lane, just blowing them up. I don't know, durability. Zoe was the champion that got murdered by durability patch harder than anyone in the game, I think. This was just, in my mind, a very good draft from Weibo. Very good draft. And um, I think that uh, picking Kalista there when enemy has Ash and Poppy Angle, I think it's tough. I think that's tough. But we continue. Game number four. Here, yeah, Billy Billy. And they ban Rumble, Poppy, Belveth. So they're just banning junglers. And Weibo follow up with Nico, Java, and Vi. Here, when Poppy was out, they revealed something here that they feel the need to ban Vi. Um, which I think in the end, you know, I think is a bit of a mistake here. I think if, if you ban Oriana here, I think that maybe you could just win the series on the spot. I think they got a little bit too much uh, ego after uh, our boy had um, a good Cinder game. Why did they keep banning Belveth? I think it's strange. If the enemy doesn't have Nico Rumble, I don't think Belveth is quite the same champ. But... They were scared, they were scared. They were very scared. <laughs> I, I don't think that um, you need to ban Belveth if the enemy can't get Rumble and can't get Nico. So, so they ban Vi instead of Oriana. I don't like that. I think that you should be able to play Wukong into Vi and be happy and uh, take it for what it is. But here, um, Oriana, right? Uh, gets locked in first, and that's kind of like a cheat code, you know? Uh, today definitely made things very, very crazy, but if you consider, like... If we remove the previous games that we just saw, like, if any team gets... If, if Billy Billy gets Oriana, Sejuani, Jax, you're thinking to yourself, what the fuck happened, you know? Yeah, sorry for the top of the hour ad break, guys. If you want to stand up against the power of ads, just subscribe. So, Weibo, uh, they um, went really deep into cooking here. Oriana gets first picked, enemy goes Ash Syndra, and then Sejuani Jackson, they pick Rel. He had the amount of 80 junglers that are available are limited, and he just slams Rel. Um, like picking like listen into Sejuani feels fucking bad. Uh, so Rel gets picked here on three and the enemy the composition is quite Mercs heavy already, you know. Then you go Tamkenj Rakanban to remove Sena Tam out of the equation, Zayarakan out of the equation, and Billy Billy follow up with Caitlin and Kalista Ban. Here I thought maybe we're gonna see another Varus angle, you know? Uh, something like this. Uh, but they slam Quinn. I thought they were going to go like 8 trokes Varus and play the game, but they go for Quinn. Quinn into Jax. Uh, the follow-up is Aphelios Bard, 
and uh, Bard into <laughs> these champions showing, like Bard gets a lot of value, you know? The enemy have like immobile carries. Like in this game too, like Bard would have been crazy. Like Bard could have gone hard and paint here, you know? Um, and it would have been would have been lit, you know? Like like Bard against Ash, Varus, Syndra is like game breaking, you know? But I think that's why they got inspiration. Like, yeah, fuck's sake, I should have played Bard against these champs. But Bard gets locked in. And these are like dream Bard spots. It's funny, you know, for my pick him. Like, my pick him. It's, it's pretty fucking... Uh, like, if we look at the crystal ball, right? Crystal ball, I have <laughs> Bard here. And if it wasn't for fucking Mickey running it down, <laughs> then I, 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 maybe there was some potential here, you know, to get this uh, champion played in five games, you know? But nevertheless, uh, Bard is locked in and they go Heimerdinger. And like, Wave will have this goofy ass looking composition. If these guys don't get ahead, they're going to be uh, really, really fucking bad, you know? Why wasn't Zaya picked today? Because Rakan was banned in a lot of games and also like these these really poke heavy bot lanes are very very tough to, to play against for Zaya. So let's take a look at this game. Bin definitely woke up a little bit in this game. This was probably the best game that Bin played uh, on the day. Uh, maybe the Cassante game was a bit better. Uh, but um, we had the Boots of Helios. Boots of Helios, Bin already flashed to set up this trade. He already get potion, got potions off for the Shy and he has Q. Gave him a little bit of lane prior, you know. Heimerdinger was picked here for lane. Like, Crisp is a, a very known Heimerdinger player, but it doesn't contribute much. It's just like a lane pick, you know. Heimerdinger is very similar to the other supports that we saw. Here it's unfortunate because Sejuani just doesn't have Q and that's why he doesn't go. Like, I'm gonna show you. Like, that's why he doesn't go. Like he has a Q cooldown, you see? I'll just uh, leave it like that so you can see the CDs. And he has no Q and that's why he waits so long and then he can't flash over. Obviously, if he had Q right away, then there's no angle for Jahu to flash. He can flash after, die. But here he, he, he bought some space, you know? Shun running the whole uh, river, you know, this is the strength of Sejuani, level 3 fighting, pushing out way way and also winning the mid situation, massive, and also having the first move into top side so Quinn can't play aggressive in a matchup that is very volatile on top, and then Jax manages to get the crash in the end, and all is good, Jao has no flash, and all is on mid. Yeah, Owen is just uh, doing his best battle impression. You guys remember battle from, from, from last year, you know? And um, Elk is just on bot and suffering for it. <laughs> He's just uh, suffering big time. I think that uh, Owen's move here in the mid, it's like the cancel is pretty huge. But this is definitely like battle inspiration. I like Alex's adaptation here to go uh, fleet and, and and of course boots. Like this this lane is it's less about the Aphelios, they just try to pick the strongest lane possible that they can be durable with and then set up the bard, you know? Like this is not a fun lane to play as Elk, but the value of bard will exceed itself, you know? The bard is just not uh, the greatest laner that you can have. So yeah, Bin has TP advantage. Uh, this is something that uh, that um, Mr. Jizuke pointed out. He didn't like the fact that uh, here Quinn doesn't push this wave because if she doesn't push this wave and base TP's back, then Jax will uh, walk to this wave and save TP. And this is what he did. He walked to the wave because Quinn base and TP back. Uh, wave had smite advantage here. And then Jax is going to catch his wave and then he can trade aggressively and then he can base TP back and get his ninja tabis, you know? So we continue. And that's the base TP back. This was um, quite crazy. Like Weiwei is not doing Drake fast at all. Um, I feel like here in this moment Weibo 
I also misjudge this watching this live. I think Weibo also misjudge how much damage they do on the Drake. Uh, because here on spots them and uh, they're doing this Drake so fucking slow. Like they do this Drake insanely slow. Can take Drakes take uh, less damage, below 50% HP. Um, this is um, bloody, no? This is this is going to be a disaster. Even in a world here where uh, Wavy just dies and they get the Drake, it's not good. Because look at the bot lane wave that Lights are sacrificing. And this is a lot of breathing room to uh, Aphelios bar. So that's a disaster, you know? And then here, Crisp flashes over with his giant's belt. He's holding up his pants, but he's not going to hold up his life. The portal comes through and uh, his composition on red side that needs to snowball just gave away everything. You're not allowed to make mistakes when you play Ash Heimerdinger or Varos X or whatever. You're not allowed to do mistakes like this. There's no recovery for you. Like, Heimerdinger is not going to be useful for the rest of the game. Like, Heimerdinger fits that school of champions that uh, in a lot of games doesn't provide any value. You know? His turrets and his damage becomes a non factor. Sure, he has his RE, which is a tool, but it's not. Uh, that big of a deal if you compare it to like an auto assault or something like this, you know? Not sure what this was here. Uh, they're just collapsing, but Elk uh, has Noon Quiver and he has Ult 2. Uh, Light is forced to cleanse and flash, and Crisp is just uh, on some good kush, you know? <laughs> like. <laughs> This looks so goofy, man, like this whole all-in situation. Like, uh, Heimerdinger is trying to Batista bomb, you know, and he uses full DPS combo, so El can just push it forward. And then Crisp is walking left for no reason at all. Uh, it's, it's pretty funny, you know. We continue. Crisp now, I think in this game he reached level 6 at minute 15. <laughs> it's uh, pretty funny. Now, uh, El Conafelios doesn't have a hard lane phase, he's super far ahead. And um, the Shy has no uh, flash. And the fact that Elk is so far ahead allows Bar to play a very dynamic game and he's just everywhere, you know? He's just everywhere. Here I think that uh, it looks to me like Ben pushed too fast, or um, I don't understand why this, this wasn't coordinated better. Because if you look at look at how much time they waste, right? Bard and Sejuani are hovering in river. Now Rihanna's hovering bottom side, like fake moving or something. Like they could have easily been four on this top turret with, together with this wave synced, and they could have hard dove and potentially won the game here. Instead, they are doing a little bit too late in Weiwei shows, and uh, not a big fan here. And then you have Bob Marley Crispy, which is marking the enemy team, and he's just on the wave, and he's placing turrets for move speed. But he has no flash, so he's just a little snack for your gal. Uh, this TP timer here was uh, quite beautiful. Uh, I don't think that Elk can flash in any shape or form uh, to survive this one. Um, I think the only disappointing part is the fact that it's a pink cord that is placed, so he could definitely have cleared it and he could have secured himself. And uh, a big shot down here for Syndra. But she dies for it. And then it gets dove twice. But this type of uh, synergy here is really, really nice. It's like the Weibo's uh, top side, like jungle top. They're very good at creating leads together, and they really put put pressure on fucking Bin. Really, really put pressure on Bin because it's like their their timing selection on the waves is really nice, really, really nice. Brianna's kind of fed and the red side composition. They don't have like good tools to come back into the game. They can like arrow, but 
this these are these are they are playing a lot of champions that don't provide a lot of value you know uh this was uh, i think this was an attempt to cancel the quin uh the rest of this game is just kind of a montage of bard being everywhere and uh, just just fast forward Weibo Gaming don't have pressure on the mid wave, they don't have pressure on side, every one of them need to be afraid of Bardult. This is goofy as fuck, I don't know what happened here. The guy was just kind of running it down. And we continue. Let's look at the game decider. I feel like I'm running out of gas, guys. Running out of gas. I don't think Heimerdinger was. It's like Heimerdinger was not the problem, but he wasn't the solution either. Hey, hey Bob Marley, crispy, you know he like that that, that situation on Drake just uh, completely lost him. All, uh, all kind of pressure in the game, you know. Yo, Barry, thank you for the tier one. I appreciate it. Why are both mid laners playing Ludens here? Well, Yagao is playing against uh, full, um, full squishy team with Syndra, Ash, Heimerdinger, Quinn. And um, Syndra, not so sure. I think Syndra can play a little bit with um, Leandre here. Maybe Hyba should have gone Leandre first. No, I think is like Giant's belt is OP for lane an early game. Like you, you walk out on the map, you have a big ass belt. That holds up your balls. You can show it to the world, you know. Like Giants Belt is super strong. So this is the problem. Red side comp can't contest mid, which means that Bard is taking over the whole map. If you can't contest mid wave against Bard, then Bard is gonna run the whole game. Like when Bard is good, he looks really OP. Because you just can't move on side because he breaks the laws of the game. Like people are annoyed about Hexec gates, but then there's Bard, right? But he needs to get through his pain points, which he did because of that Drake fight. And uh, Sejuani and uh, like even this fight, it's like this fight is so poorly played by Billy Billy, but they win any fight because they just have, you know, so much juice in their kit, you know? Talon support incoming to answer Bard. Okay. <laughs> like they're playing it pretty goofy here, the situation. Like Billy Billy was uh, not super precise. But uh, they're just kind of getting outvalued at this point. The game is over. Game number five, ladies and gentlemen. Game number five. Weibo Gaming. Dropping the Orn 4-5 because the enemy is showing full AD composition. I thought in this spot, right? Our, in my mind, what I was cooking was Rankton, Azir. I was cooking like Gwen, Tristana, this type of thing, you know? Like I was, I was all over the place, but they went for a trusty old Orn Azir. The thing is, even though Billy Billy is full AD, it's just that you put yourself in a in a in a situation where you get um, you are going to also get so much Mercs value, right? Mercs on Jace, Mercs on Giovanni, Mercs on Kisanta, it's turbo value in this game. It all comes down to to the position of Kalista. Like, how strong would Kalista be in the game? Um, a crucial detail about Billy Billy is that. It's very, if, if they don't win early, then the game concludes, if, if the game concludes before, like if they're not on curve to get LDR and Cyrilda in the right spots, 
their composition really falls off a cliff. So uh, when you're playing full AD, it's just important that you don't allow yourself to do mistakes because there's going to be such a power dip between item 2 and 3 because the enemy is going to have armor pouring in, you know? Uh, looking at this game, I, I think that uh, we, we've defined already what, what is important and the early game being crucial. I'm thinking, you know, enemy has Sejuani into Maokai, Kate, Lux into Caitlyn, uh, Kalista, Renato. You have the strong early game jungler, you have Kesanta into Orn. You need to be able to win early. It's like red side composition needs to secure Herald and they need to secure uh, the Drakes. Uh, if they are losing both, then they can be losing the game here. But this was the most tragic observer work of all time because look, they use Flashbot. They use Flashbot, but we're looking at Weiwei. Most tragic, tragic camera work ever. Really tragic. So we have flashes burnt on bot, on has no sum. We don't know. We, I guess we, we just, it's just flash for flash. It is what it is. Same thing here. Eventually Shun goes for a mid lane gank and they don't show it. They just don't show it. It was driving me crazy. Here I'm like, here I said on the co stream, I was like, guys, that's mid lane gank. Show me mid lane gank. Show me. We don't get to see it. Look. Sejuani Q flashed and then Jahu flashed. I don't know how Jahu flashed. Jahu fail flashed into the wall, I think. He fail flashed into the wall. Why are we watching Orn and Kisanta trade? Why? Why? It happens later again too, man. It happens later again too. I'm, I'm going crazy. I am going, I'm going crazy. Jahu flashed into the wall. It looks like Shun Q flashed. And then here we 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 tune into bot, and then it looks like On is just getting clapped. Like he just gets uh cute uh, and he dies. This is massive, of course. This is a really, really big deal. Uh this is this is huge. And uh, as mentioned before, like they're winning the matchup on both sides and they did it 2v2. Really big. This is like crisp and light. Really, really, really fantastic. This game winning. No joke, it's game winning. And now this is going to be, you know, the perfect segue for them to uh, reach uh, level six timer. Like Lux really falls off on six unless she's the, gathered an advantage, you know, and she has momentum in the lane. Unless they're not on six, if they're on an even wave, they can find all ins and trade sums. You know, they can do some good things. You know, we continue. Mark is just farming away, they managed to kill Jace, top lane is relatively even. And now uh, Kalista Renata, they're first on the river and uh, uh, they can begin to do Drake if they want to. But they decide not to, Mark is just clearing camps, I'm not sure why. Why are we watching, are we watching top? I, I don't know, like I, I don't get why we're watching top. I want to watch like the movement of Kalista Renata here and Maokai. And uh, I, I want to see what's up, you know? But it doesn't happen. Because in my mind there, I thought after Kalista Renata crashed the wave, I thought that they're going to just hit the Drake with Maokai. Um, but uh, turns out it wasn't so. Where he grabs the six instead of taking the Drake, goes straight to the bottom side, and uh, look how they play around the pocket here. It's like here, this Maokai ult is not spotted by them until it's too late, and then the blockage didn't land. On gets rooted, and they manage to burn the sums of Elk too, and they also kill him. Now it's like, phew, game over, man. Way, way for me, 100%. Like, I want to give the Shy a lot of fucking credit, right? Because he was better than the player I thought could be a, like a big difference maker for Billy Billy. 
Right? But Wei Wei was so fucking good today, man. Like Wei Wei was on point, man. And I think Wei Wei saved the whole fucking season of Weibo, man. Like I love this dude. Crazy good. Like he was always on the right right time on top side. Shannon the perform, I think. Then again, it's like, did Shannon perform or did he just uh, smurf on Javan, you know? That was like a question. Like, that was a question, you know, all along, you know? Because Javan was kind of cold. His Javan was definitely cold. But this meta was a meta that he was never comfortable with, you know? I think I think that uh, Weiwei was amazing today. I don't like the Lux pick. What do you think about it? I think picking like they need to pick a range to put into Renata, right, and, and play the lane. But that's that's the edge that you're playing on, right? That is the edge that you're playing on. You are dancing on the edge, and if you make a mistake with Lux and Kate, you lose the game. This was also beautifully done by Weibo. Um, the key thing here is that this works for Billy Billy because they have Herald right, but they managed to defend for so long. Yeah, game five MVP, like Chris played really good, but for the series, no, like his Lux, his Heimerdinger, like it was, it was some trash, you know, it was definitely some trash. This wasn't the end of days. I think this was, in fact, really massive, massive for Billy Billy because, as we saw before, they lost Caitlyn Flash, they lost uh, Lux Flash. The fact that they got out of lane phase and their Flash was coming off cooldown is like a miracle in itself, you know. Any explanation why why do we pick Prior Jace R1? Because the enemy first picked Maokai and um, they just wanted to go in that direction. It's like Gyagao and Jahu has played a lot of Jace. Uh, Weiwei was the sub for uh, JJ, no? In EDG? When they won Worlds? Am I crazy? Oh, that's Junjia. Oh, shit. Fuck my life. <laughs> so this game position as mentioned before, very losing for Billy Billy. I, I don't think um, they have anything to do, you know? These games are horrible because it's like Jace and Caitlyn need LDR, but they're not going to reach that point until Soul, you know? Plain and simple. But this game became competitive for no reason at all. Let's see. Let's see what Weibo fuck up. So, the Shy gets murdered on side. I think um, I think that the most important thing is that he just can't be contesting the, the neutral waves, you know? Uh, if he has no turret, he can't contest the neutral waves, and it's very easy for Kisante to find an all-in window, you know?
We continue. Here we go again. At least my speech worked. My speech worked to some degree. I was cursing the shy. He was straight up running it. <laughs> Spectacular temple trap from the shy. <laughs> so Cassandra is pushing away. Ben has TP. Has ult for the situation. Uh, the EQs were flying but not landing. They are playing for poke. I thought it was really, really insane how like On is getting so much space here. I think that uh, the Shy plays this fight way too fast because they're getting to DPS him uh, for free. Like here, I think that uh, like On is just creating so much space and Weibo with their composition is like running into the enemy, you know? I think this, this spot here, I think that Weibo just rush and I think that the Orn TP just doesn't work. I think that they need to combine ults a little bit better. And I think it would have been better, you know? Like, their engage was just so mis-executed. And uh, they failed pressure to go because of the Jace poke. Uh, Lux as well is getting chased by Weiwei. And uh, they are charging forward. But Bilibili do a very good job of, of kiting, you know? Very good job of kiting. I think here it's just that, like, they have Kalista ult, Renato ult, they have Azir ult, Maokai, Oriana ult, Orn ult, uh, sorry, not Oriana ult. I think they should just fucking find a way to, 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 to combine these ultimates if they want to break the ankles of the opposition. Uh, but um, they look, here's the Maokai ult. Maokai ult gets blocked, and then the one ult comes. And then it's just a kind of strange sequence of, of using them. I think they need to pull the Drake, invite the enemy a little bit more, and, and that's it, you know. This was a massive swing because Caitlyn got all of the gold in the world, but for some reason she goes Gale Force, and I really don't like it. I think she really needs IE here. Xiao gets shown in the end, but this is a massive gold swing in the right pockets because Jace gets gold, and also Caitlyn gets gold. But this is what's so tilting about this one. We are in this replay, in this replay, and then... Out of replay. It's it's mind boggling, man. It's mind boggling. Like it's really I I'm so disappointed. So let's look at this little, little, little screen here. So the Maokai ult is just massive. The Orn ult is also massive. There's no Orn ult actually, never mind. It's just the fucking QE combo is fucking massive. And uh, Shun doesn't have Q, he can't Q out. Okay. Great. I usually with Billy's comp, I think that they should just stand on the mid wave and there should be more in an arc. I think that they just position together very poorly there. I think like Caitlyn should be towards mid and then it's like, I want to have Jason in this spot. I want to have uh, Lux in, in this spot, Kate here, and then I want to have Kisante Sejuani here, and then the, the, the fight is not going to be as, 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 as easy, you know? Here I think that L could have played better, like I think L kind of ran it down here, I think Bin also could choose targets a little bit better, like uh, Bin it just goes towards Jahu and pushes them out, and then I don't know what L is doing here, I think he EQ's too early, and then he just starts fucking channeling ultimate here, and then Jao just finds him. Just fucking blood just starts channeling ultimate. And then he dies here, Jao just kills him, dry. I 
I think this could have been played better. But I repeat, it's like now, uh, the gold curve is looking good for blue side. They're looking super strong. Uh, I think that they scale super well with their champions. Armor value is high. And um, the enemy Caitlyn has a gale force, so her DPS is a lot worse. Like uh, Caitlyn's job is to kill the front line, because no one else will in this game. And then Jace should EQ, and Caitlyn should itemize to defend him. Um, this is what Bin looks at TP. And way, way. I just use a smite and, and flash and Nimbus out. Wait. Why doesn't it why doesn't it go on cooldown? Look, Weiwei's flash is just on cooldown on the overlay. We continue. Still no LDRs, nothing, nothing finished. Ah, if you pick, if you play Crown and you engage, I think Crown is pretty fucking good. Crown is pretty fucking good. But uh, red side team is not ready to fight yet. They're just TPing now with Jace on top, they're giving the Drake, they, they are accepting. They cannot fight yet, they don't have the items, they don't have the facilities with that big man. I still think blue side is very favored here. We fast forward. Just want to look at what information uh, red side has here to, to make this decision. Orn is on bot with no TP. Orn is on bot with no TP, guys. In game 5. That is... So Maokai ults as well for your Google. Maokai ult and Orn is on bot. Okay. <laughs> they start now shuffle that, which is very good. But... I said this on 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 um, on the costume too. I, I was like, this Nash is not decisive enough. I still think Blue Side is winning. Still think Blue Side is winning. I said. Uh, Jace had to to flash out of the pit here, which is crucial for the fight that is coming, right? And um, in my mind here, I still think like Weibo's composition is just so fucking strong at this point. Everything is gonna come down to the soul, and I want to look at the soul fight because I didn't really like. I didn't really. There was so much to look at. Because so I was looking at how Bin was playing. And uh, the, the, the fighting and the posturing that happened ahead of time was very favorable for Billy Billy. Like they managed to find really, really good poke. Uh, they managed to chunk Orn here to 1 HP. Like this is this is the main mistake the Shy has done all tournament long, right? He over postures, loses all of his HP and sometimes even dies. They push out Caitlyn, but she has a Fleet and Stormraise and Gale Force, so there's no Kalisto ultimate. And then the Shy, like, I don't know, what, what, what is the Shy doing here? What is that? What, what's he doing? They just uh, pop the crown. EQs are flying. Let me see how Weiwei lost HP. How did Weiwei lose uh, his HP? I didn't see actually. Weiwei just dropped to, to 1 HP here. Oh, he's just eating shit from Caitlyn. Okay, the LDR is doing work. So yeah, does Bin just grief? Because he, he throws his body into a Maokai that is really, really bad. Like this, this Maokai is so weak already and he ults him out and then he dies to Zhao Hu. Is that what happens? If Zhao has void, he kills him for sure, right? What happens to him? And then what happened in this fight? 
It's like, it's the key observers. I feel like Shun is just playing in the wrong pocket, no? He needs to pull this Drake downwards. Why is this Drake pulled in that direction? Why is why is Drake not pulled in in the other the other direction when Red Side is the one leashing it? And then Shun smites a champ. Look at Yagao, one-shotting fucking elk, by the way. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> this Renato ult is fucking massive, man. It feels to me like Billy Billy could have played this much better, no? Like, how, how did they lose so much ground when the enemy can only go through mid? And then Kisanta just full sending himself into Maokai. I think I think if Bin just uh, plays it slow and they can keep the posture together, I think that they can maybe have a have a winning situation here based off of the HP of the Shy and and Maokai, but they win the game. They win the game. All right. So to summarize, all right, summarize today's series. I think that mid lane wise, I think that they were similar in performance. I think, uh, I think mid support. I think like besides Crisp in in, in game number five, I think he was kind of you know. Not super, super exciting. They didn't win? Oh yeah. <laughs> they couldn't end. <laughs> I, I think... <laughs> Sorry. Forgive me. Could you have ended here? Oh. I'm very tired, guys. It's, it's coming out. It's coming out, man. That's a good final fight. Yeah, Light kind of played that pretty dizzy, I think. Oh, the longest replay of all time. Oh yeah. We are fighting on mid and posturing on mid and we see coach reaction. Uh, the issue coming out of the previous situation is just that uh, the bot lane just has no summoners. No summoners. Shun dies, on dies, the game is over. So, to summarize the series, I, I think that the Shy... I think for me, Weiwei was the MVP, but considering like how we built up towards the series, I think that um, the Shy beating out Bin the way he did was truly something else. Like, without nameplates, right? Without nameplates, I think Weiwei was amazing today, right? But the fact that the Shy did this against Bin, and Bin is the biggest weapon of Billy Billy, and he really, like, annihilated uh, Bin together with Weiwei, I think that's, like, a huge, huge fucking plus, you know? Like, uh, Bin, like, like, the Shy really did a good job, man. I think that... Uh, the Graves game was fantastic by the Shy, and uh, the Rumble game was also massive, you know, 
but you can give a lot of credit in those games for Velveth, right? It's like Weiwei was participating in every step of the way, you know? I don't know, bro, the shy picked four winning matchups, no? Well, the thing is, it's like, this is what Billy Billy has done the entire time and no one has managed to deal with him, you know? It's like, him playing Jax, like, like him playing Jax here and having a hard time against Aatrox, you know? This is really, really big, you know? But of course, I add, I add, it's like Bin did some mistakes, but the Shy made him pay a lot for it. And additionally, I think that um, Weiwei was so fucking great. I have to say though, even though this series was super interesting, I am hoping that tomorrow we see a way higher level, you know? I think that you could see like discrepancies in the series individually, uh, in set games, you know? And... Um, Today was very scrappy, you know?